Hello, I'm Paulo Shikarian, and today we have a really exciting video for you that deals with some of our own research here at Arizona State. And we will be presenting this at the AAAI Spring Symposium at the end of March. But there's also a piece of software that goes along with this research, and I think that's what's really most exciting. So, and the software is called PyReason. And really the idea here was to devise a computational logic that is really designed for modern applications. So we did a few things. We coded, we, uh, coded the library so it would work in Python. We designed it with a lot of the neural symbolic frameworks in mind, things that we have talked about on this channel. And we have designed several optimizations to make sure that it runs fast, that it interfaces with things uh, such as graphical structures that can make it much more practical and easy to use, whether for research or real world applications. So the main idea was to use something called annotated logic. And this idea of annotated logic was introduced in the early 90s by Michael Kiefer and Via Subramanian. And the idea was there were many people around this time that were introducing all kinds of various uh, fuzzy and real valued logics. And it turned out that many of them could be captured in a very general framework. And certain things could be proven about this framework. Uh, such as the deduction process could be accomplished with a fixed point operator. And in many cases, that actually meant that you could have polynomial time inference. Over the years, there were various extensions to this that allowed for things such as temporal and graphical reasoning. And these main results have still been maintained. What we've noticed is that a lot of what's been captured in annotated logic is a superset of various things we've seen in recent neural symbolic frameworks. So the idea that we thought might be useful is instead of inventing a new monotonic logic for each and every neural symbolic framework, why not just use annotated logic that sort of gives you a roadmap of capabilities that you could build your neural symbolic framework to support. So the first major capability is open world reasoning. Now, what does this mean? Well, typically with a real valued logic, you have a closed world assumption, which means that everything starts out, all your uh, uh, logical statements start out being zero, zero, which is totally false. And if in, as inference proceeds, they become more and more true. Now a open world assumption, which is what we support in Pi Reason, Everything instead starts with an interval, which initially is the interval zero one, which means that there is no information. So you're uncertain as opposed to being false. And things still increase in a monotonic fashion, either becoming totally true or totally false. The next uh, key idea is multi-step inference. And to give you an, a short example, let's say you have uh, three logical statements. We know that A is true, A implies B, and B implies C. Now, if we only allow one step of inference, we can only conclude from this that A and B are both true. However, with multi-step inference, which is what Pi Reason supports, you actually get uh, the complete set of what's entailed here, A, B, and C. Now, bear in mind, we just kept this simple in a propositional case. Uh, Pi Reason supports a full first order logic as well as the um, annotations for open world reasoning. The next uh, desirable aspect is explainability. So, again, given the same example, something that's not explainable, we'll just say, hey, here is your result A, B, and C, they're all true. Whereas Pi Reason, which is explainable, will actually say, hey, A is true because it's initial fact, B is true because A implies B, and C is true because B implies C. Now, 
uh, this is a very simple example, so it's easy to understand, you know, why all this occurred, but we design this for scale. So what happens when you start to reason about thousands or even millions of these things, and you have one very specific thing, you want to understand that trace of inference that led to the conclusion. Well, PyReason is designed not only to do that inference correctly, but also it provides you that trace, which is, I think, going to be very valuable in building systems that are more amenable to human understanding, as well as debugging and being robust to things like adversarial attacks. The next is PyReason also has a built-in finite temporal logic capability. And so a couple of things, it's a finite temporal logic. And of course, if you're dealing with neural networks and you want to do temporal reasoning, you generally are going to be dealing with things that are finite in nature because your input size is limited. So PyReason uh, does this to be directly compatible with these various neural architectures. Another aspect is non-Markovian temporal relationships. So what happens in a given time step doesn't have to depend directly on the previous time step. You can have temporal relationships that span multiple time steps, and you can have those relationships be um, heterogeneous within your logic program. So I could have some relationships that go from the, the the difference takes place over one time period. Others might be three, others might be 20. Um, it's totally arbitrary. Whatever is either learned or designated uh, upon the input. And then likewise, it also supports non-monotonicity between time steps. So even though for a given time step, you have to move up that uh, structure going from uncertain to being more true or false, um, but this doesn't mean if something for time step one is at a certain level of truth or falsehood or uncertainty, the next time step can be totally um, something else. And so even though uh, Pi Reason is inherently built upon a monotonic logic between time steps, it does support non-monotonic relationships. The next is reasoning about multimodal graphs. So we haven't talked about it too much in this video, but PyReason supports a first order logic that actually includes quantifiers. And one of the ways that you can input first order logic information into the system is through the use of a multimodal graph. And so we show an example here where we have people related by being um, you know, e friends on email or friends uh, by telephone call or some other means. And so you have like this very rich structure of uh, what the relationships mean, aspects of the people uh, within this graph. And it doesn't just have to be limited to things of a social nature. It can support, say, knowledge graph inference, for example. And we've designed this to interface with things like uh, graph ML to make it really easy to import graphical data into PyReason. And we thought this would be really important for many applications because uh, many people who might not be as comfortable with a first order logic might still find uh, graph-based structures to be something uh, that they're used to. And then finally, the sixth point we want to bring up is we've designed this to support neurosymbolic reasoning and neurosymbolic AI in general. And if you've watched some of the videos on this channel of the various frameworks, you maybe have caught on that some of these frameworks, they introduce a logic of their own that maybe as a subset of data log, maybe as some fuzzy logic, maybe as something else special. And you know, all these different frameworks are introducing their own logic. And we thought from a practical standpoint, it might be useful to design a logical framework that is that can support many of these. And as just like generalized annotated logic is a superset of many other real valued and uh, quantified logics out there. Uh, we try to do the same thing, but in, from an implementation standpoint. So let me give you two examples of two widely popular neurosymbolic frameworks. 
So first is LTN or logic tensor networks. And we support this because PyReason inherently supports fuzzy operators, supports various types of uh, quant quantifiers, existential and universal and fuzzy variants of those at the LTN uh, people call aggregators. Um, there are practical extensions to these fuzzy operators that uh, the authors of LTN have introduced to make learning easier, and those are supported as well. And we are currently working on uh, directly enabling uh, vector and tensor representations of the symbols as input into PyReason. So this will directly support the symbol grounding uh, that you have in LTNs already. Likewise, logical neural networks, which many people view as something you know, quite different from LTN, because of our use of uh, generalized annotated logic as an overarching theme here, we actually can support both. And we can support LNNs because we support associating logical elements with intervals instead of scalar values. We support parameterized operators. And also because we have a, a fixed point based um, deductive process, we could support the upward downward inference process presented in the LNN work. And our support's not limited to just these two frameworks. There's plenty of other uh, neurosymbolic frameworks, such as differentiable ILP, uh, where again, the logic is a direct subset. Um, and also, you know, looking toward the future as, you know, folks start to do things with temporal logic or logics that are based around a graphical structure, uh, PyReason supports that today. So those developments um, is on the learning side or the parameterization uh, versions of those, as those mature and that research is done, there's now already an existing uh, uh, software to support inference in such a logic. So if you wanna learn more about PyReason, uh, the first page, you should probably check out would be the homepage at uh, neurosymbolic.asu.edu slash pyreason. Of course, this is an open source library and it's available online uh, to download, install, and use. Codebase is also available. You can see that on our labs uh, GitHub. So uh, github slash lab v2 slash pyreason. It can be installed directly with pip, uh, very easy, pip install pyreason. And finally, um, you know, please attend our talk at AAAI Make at the Spring Symposium this year. We look forward to seeing you there. And these links can be found in the description. Thank you very much.